Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to another episode of Soft Soul. So today on Soft Soul, we're going to be discussing toxic relationships. So if this is a conversation that you feel that you want to be included in or that you want to know a little more about or get a little bit of advice, stay tuned. What I personally feel about toxic relationships, I feel that they are very detrimental to your health. Very detrimental. Um, But what some people tend to get confused um, about toxic relationships, a lot of people like to think that a toxic relationship is just with your partner. Um, whether you are a male or a female and you're dating a male or a female, they tend to think that is the only toxic relationship that you will have when it's far more deeper than that. You can have toxic relationships with your partner. You can have toxic relationships with your family, your friends, your uh, co-workers, your boss, um, business partners, the list goes on. You can have a toxic relationship really with anybody. And you have to know that within relationships, you have to have boundaries. And these particular boundaries, they protect you. These boundaries protect you from being hurt, become becoming broken uh they help you from you know going to a state of depression uh they help you from you know just feeling lost and losing yourself they help you from a lot of different things um and me speaking from you know personal experiences i have had many different um toxic relationships from you know, people that I was actually talking to, to family. But one of my main toxic relationships was with my family. And the reason I say that is because for certain people, when, depending on what family you have and how your family acts and things like that, their beliefs, um, my family is, you know, they, they are very religious very religious um and growing up it was you know sort of kind of you know a problem for me because I mean when you're a kid some kids don't really care about any of that they don't care about being religious they don't you know they they're going to church because they have to go to church because you know you're being made to go to church um you're not really get deep in you're, you're not getting deep into the word you're not really paying attention the lessons um they're teaching you're not really learning because you as a kid you just have this careless mentality so i wasn't a bad kid but i did have times where i just wanted to experience life myself rather than being told, oh, you have to do this, you have to do that, or uh, this is not of God and you can't do this. Um, But in reality, I was being told these things because those were the beliefs of my family members, not necessarily mine. And, you know, they teach the Bible a lot, a lot. Um, But some of the things that you know, they teach in the Bible, I interpret differently than they do. So, you know, there were just certain things that we didn't agree on or me, I was always the kid that had a lot of questions. (laughs) Even in school, um, I would get in trouble because I had too many questions that my teachers couldn't answer. I didn't get in trouble because I was bad or I was causing trouble. That's not why I got in trouble. I got in trouble because I was a little too curious. I always wanted to know deeper than what they were telling us that to me, it just scratched the surface. But as I got older, you know, I had to learn that everybody doesn't have to like me. 
and I don't have to like everybody. Yes, you can love your neighbor, you know, you know, because in reality, God wants us to love everyone. But that does not mean that I have to like you. And that does not mean that I have to surround myself with you or people like you. Because if you feel as though someone is, if you feel that they're making you become a totally different person to the point that you can't even recognize yourself. If you feel that that particular person is doing that to you, you do not need to surround yourself with them at all. You have some people out here. Um, it could be it could be your best friend. It could be your cousin. It could it could be anybody that you know you have a relationship with. But this particular person just might want to just you know they they come to you and they just dump everything on you. They dump all of their negative energy on you. <laughs> all the problems that they have, uh, anything that they're going through, all the struggles. They come to you, talk to you about it, and just dump it on you. And when they do this, a lot of times they leave the conversation feeling lighter, feeling so much better, um, having a little more energy than they did when they came into the conversation. Meanwhile, you, your energy has just been drowned with all this negativity. And now you're trying to figure out why you feel a certain way. Why do you feel bad? Why do you feel like you're in a funk? Why do you feel like you're depressed a little bit? It's because that person, instead of them, you know, just trying to forget or, you know, put certain struggles and things behind them and thinking and talking about something that brings positivity, they decided they wanted to talk about everything negative and just throw it on you and then leave. That right there is a toxic relationship. Toxic. Now, it's one thing if, you know, you and your friend are, you're you're both talking about, you know, things that you guys may be going through. It's not just one-sided. They don't just come to you and just throw everything on you and then want to leave. But if they, if they genuinely are a good friend or a cousin or whatever, if they're, if, if they're very good and, you know, have positive intentions when they come and talk to you, they will care about what you're going through as well. It's not just about them. They listen to what you have to say. Whether you you have a business idea or, you know, you want to do a career change or, you know, you want to take up a new hobby, whatever the case may be, you know, they will ask and listen to these things that you want to say to them instead of only unloading their baggage on you. And us as women, that's what we have to realize because a lot of time us women, we can be like sponges. <laughs> we can be like sponges. You know, SpongeBob, we, sometimes we can be like sponges. And, you know, we take in and we soak up all that energy that, you know, that friend or that cousin or that boss or that coworker, we soak it up into ourselves and we don't realize that some of the stuff that they're saying causes us to be a certain type of way. It can cause you to be bitter because now they have put things into your mindset to what you are thinking of now. You never have thought about these things before, but now they say they're going through it and this, this, and that, and the third, and now you are thinking about it constantly and it's bringing down your energy. This is the, this is the stuff that we need to we need to take out of our lives. These are the things we need to cancel. <laughs> you know, they like the cancel culture. These are the things that we need to cancel. We need to cancel allowing certain people to come into our lives, come into our space, and drown our energy in negativity. We need to cancel that. It is not healthy. It's not healthy at all all it's not I don't care if it's someone that is your blood I don't care 
It's not healthy. And if they really cared about you like they are supposed to, if you guys are blood, why are they coming and just dumping everything on you and leaving? Not even caring about anything that you have going on, not asking how you are doing, not coming in just to check up on you. The only thing they do when they reach out to you is they want to dump their baggage on you. They can care less about the struggles that you're going through. They can care less about, you know, the trials and tribulations that you may be overcoming. They can care less about any of these things. They don't care. They act like they do care. And the, the, the way that you can tell that someone is faking and acting like they care but really don't, try to just talk to them about something that you may have been battling with or something that you may have been wanting to try out for some time, whether it's, like I said, it's a business venture or whatever. Try to talk to them about that. And you pay attention to their actions and reactions when you are talking to them. Because if they have this sense of, uh-huh, right, okay, like they really don't care, like they're waiting for you to hurry up and finish so that they can tell you whatever they wanted to tell you, they don't care. They don't care. And that right there is toxic. It's toxic. And those are the people that you should distance yourself from. Because if you don't distance yourself they're going to continue to do the same things over and over and over again. And all it's going to do is drain your energy over and over and over again. And that's what we do not want. Especially if you have children. Because your children, they need their mama. <laughs> they need mommy. So they don't want to have to you know, deal with the consequences of you talking to that particular family member or that particular best friend or, you know, that coworker or that partner. They don't want to have to deal with the consequences of you talking to that person and them bringing your neck, your, uh, your energy all the way down because now your energy is low and you're going to come back home to your children and take it out on them. Now you have an attitude for no reason. They don't know why you have an attitude. They've been waiting to see you all day, but they don't know why mommy has an attitude. And then they're going to start to think that they are the reason why you have an attitude. And without you really knowing it, you're hurting your children. You're hurting them because they are going to start to think that they are the problem. When they're not the problem, you may come home, you may come home and you feel at peace a little bit when you come home and you see them and you see how happy they are, but your, your energy is just so low and it's been battling, you know, with this negativity that that person you were talking to has put on you to where you can't help, but to lose it a little bit. You can't help, but to yell at them, fuss at them for doing something that children are supposed to do. Children get into things. They make mistakes. They're children. They're supposed to make a mistake and learn from it. And you're supposed to teach them that that is something they're not supposed to do. But when you're teaching them, you do not have to yell and scream at them. You do not have to just hit them repeatedly when they did something small as uh, like a, a, your, your son can leave the toilet seat up. You are yelling and screaming at him because he did that. Or your daughter. Your daughter decides she wanted to look pretty, so she went in the bathroom and she was combing or brushing her hair and she got some hair on, on the counter or some hair on the floor. You do not have to yell, scream, and beat them because of those things. Yes, you tell them this is what you're not supposed to do. Or if you're going... You tell your daughter, if you're going to go in here and, and fix yourself up and comb and brush your hair, make sure you clean the hair up off of the floor. That's all you have to do. And yes, sometimes you have to tell kids multiple times. They're kids. They're still learning. So yeah, you got to tell them multiple times. And what do you do? As a parent, as a mother, you tell them again. 
Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't give your children any type of discipline. I'm not saying that whatsoever. Because kids do need to be disciplined as well. But sometimes you have to realize, are you actually disciplining them? Or are you taking out your anger and your frustrations or your depression out on them? Which is it? That's what we have to think of as women. We go through a lot in a day, especially if you're a parent. But even if you're not a parent, you go through a lot. You have to go to work. You got to go to school. You have to live up to the expectations of this society in itself as a woman. Sometimes we're, we're talked about because of the way we look, whether it's your skin, your hair, or your weight. You're talked about. So there is a lot of things that we go through in this world. And there's a lot of things that we have to overcome. But you have to realize you will overcome it. And you have to trust the process. Trust God and trust the process. Because he's not going to put more on you than you can bear. So don't give up on God because he's not going to give up on you. So when it comes to toxic relationships. If you are dealing with people that you can tell they really don't care about you and your well-being, whether the well-being is physically, mentally, or emotionally, or even spiritually. If they don't care about those things, but yet they want to come to you and unload their baggage without even asking you, how are you doing? How are the kids? How's life? Is there anything you're going through? If they don't care about asking you those questions, those are the people you need to distance yourself from. They're toxic and they're going to be very detrimental to your health. And sis, we need you. I need you. We may not know each other, but spiritually, I need you. We need to come together as women. And we need to teach our younger girls before they grow into women. And then for some of us older women, we need to teach each other. Because like I said before, there are things that we need to unlearn. Because a lot of the things that we were taught growing up were not the right way to go about certain things. So there are certain traits that we need to unlearn and then we need to learn the right way to do them. So I say all of that to say, care about your self love, your mental health and realize some people are not healthy for you. And you don't have to like everybody and they don't have to like you. And you do not need to surround yourself with everybody or anybody who does not have your best interest in life. So I thank you for listening to this episode today. And hopefully you really got something out of everything that I was talking about. And hopefully it helped you in some way. You know, hopefully it helped heal you or it gave you a little bit of clarity on something that God has been telling you to do that you might have just been overlooking. But I'm just hoping that I helped some of you out at least a little bit. So until next time, I thank you for tuning in and just know that You are a strong woman. You are a smart woman. You are a loving and nurturing woman. You are a beautiful woman. And you are becoming the best version of yourself. And you are about to level up and get to the highest level 
than you could even imagine for yourself.